Okay, in this segment, I want to talk about um, a breakdown of jobs in the U.S., but more specifically, um, the classes or categories of workers within uh, industry within within the U.S. Now, I want to preface this by saying I don't want anything to come across as offensive or um, in any way insensitive uh, because sometimes this, this can be a, a touchy subject in ways but because what I'm breaking down is basically uh, jobs that um, society largely associates with classes of individual like blue collar versus white collar etc um, but I want to be a little bit more specific to kind of break down about how a level of say education or experience or training translates into a given job in a typical industry or, or career um, so with that being said so let's talk about classes or categories so to start with I want to differentiate between say labor uh, in an organization, the skilled worker, and then the uh, manager or management in the organization. Okay, so uh, in basic terms, business is about delivering some level of value proposition. Okay, um, now you're going to need workers that can actually do the function that you're doing. If you're building a skyscraper, someone has to put in the rivet right someone has to weld the beams someone has to put in drywall lay the flooring etc so um, that is a laborer function now um, typically it has a level of of skill associated with it that is unique to that individual but they tip it they tend to be as they say blue collar jobs they are as highly paid as others um, and it oftentimes uh, depends on a level of physical exertion or in other cases say um, secretarial functions uh, um, uh, things of that nature are uh, less um, less dependent on uh, logic or thinking or the ability to manage others it's more task oriented and, and oftentimes focuses on, on mundane task at that so that's that's your labor and then you have your skilled worker group which uh, it tends to be your individuals who have become extremely proficient in some area like your IT folks or something like that um, oftentimes from technical degree programs and things like that that serve an extremely valuable function in itself but again um, there tends to be not a lot of room for upward mobility or advancement from those uh, positions itself that is there's not a full career track associated with them um, oftentimes the beginning spot and the end of career spot is not a great deal diff different now lots of times those skilled worker positions these individuals jump over to management or management of um, skilled work uh, of labor uh, or other skilled workers which we'll we'll talk about in a minute and then you have the management um, the, the management class or group in the organization and this is generally what what we talk about as corporate <laughs> within any branch or uh, segment of a business um, and this is going to be your your um, accounting your marketing your advertising um, your sales executives your uh, all the all the people that fall directly under the vice president level of any given segment or section of uh, the organization so there's a definite dichotomy from the the laborer or the skilled worker now within labor management there's uh, there's labor management and then there's management track professionals lots of times you'll have labor or the skilled worker that will graduate up and manage other laborers and skilled worker but again it's not tied to the, these individuals may not have the highest level of education they may not have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree that's often required for the management track professional so while there is upward mobility from these individuals they'll typically be the manager of the local branch or the local store um, or etc or a particular manager of a particular work crew or something like that along the operational lines um, but again like I said these individuals started out as laborers or skilled workers themselves and after years graduated to that where they're managing others in that system or function and then you have the management track professionals where the management track professionals are generally coming out of business schools oftentimes uh, having worked in entry-level um, management 
professional training, accounting, marketing, finance, uh, operations, etc. Early on, immediately after college, and they go back for a, a master's degree and a specialized degree, generally an MBA, um, which is a more again more gentleness degree, and then they come back at the ground floor of what it means to be a management track professionals, and these are the individuals who are going to work in. Um, a given area or oftentimes in multiple areas of the internal corporate area uh, role, the accounting, the operations, the finance, etc. And uh, they're going to seek management experience in all of these. And they're on a track to move up in the organization. And their objective is to be vice president one day or potentially an executive officer um, one day uh, in a given area or field. And they'll, they'll generally acquire their specialty tracks, whether it's uh, operations or marketing or finance or accounting. Uh, and kind of finance and accounting tend to converge a little bit later on. Uh, so with that in mind, there is this dichotomy and education overlaps with these very much because lots of times the labor or the labor management go back to school and get their bachelor's degree in hopes of making that jump over to the um, management track professional group or class um, well, where they may start out again on the ground floor with, with 28, 30 year old uh, MBA graduates or, or master's degree candidates. Uh, and again, they're on the track to grow with the corporation and move up towards uh, an executive function. And the real difference there are the soft skills uh, associated with and then the general, um, um, the general awareness of or, or um, knowledge of different areas that are associated with education, that you have a well-rounded view of education in general so you can think outside the box, that your exposure to these different areas give you an um, uh, edge in thinking strategically or making um, the right decisions um, as you move up the, the organization. So th that's the difference. And right or wrong, that dichotomy exists. Uh, in other countries, uh, these job positions or classes are more pronounced and uh, are strongly tied to socioeconomic class or status in society, where I think in the U.S. we're a little less uh, tied to that than you see in some of the other uh, countries in the world. Uh, so anyway, so that's the different classes or characteristics there in the job environment. And <clears throat> now I want to talk to you about the uh, new employee versus the lateral transfer. Uh, as we'll talk about later, um, lots of times the new employee strictly comes from uh, internship programs in larger co corporations. So a Coca-Cola, Delta, um, uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson may only hire new employees on a management tract from uh, accomplished business schools, right? Um, it's, um, they're, they're not putting out blanket advertisements for these individuals to apply for their firms. They're hiring internally or they're, like I say, going to recruit at larger business schools to bring in this talent. Um, the jobs that they put out are generally for lateral transfers from other organizations like this to to come in. Okay, now much of what I'm saying doesn't really apply to the smaller business or the uh, or the small to mid-sized corporation that they don't have a developed internship program. They don't have um, as much as many people internally to hire from. So uh, they're more apt or more likely to put out um, job um, calls for individuals in these uh, in these positions. Now again, you're going to have tons of listed positions for the uh, labor or the skilled or the skilled worker position. You're not going to have many for the management tract. So that's why it's extremely important during your uh, business school career that if you know you are going to go into that management professional tract to try to get into that tract as early as possible. If you're not at a school that allows you to do on-campus interviews and to get internships and then to get into the early um, new employee programs at Fortune 500 companies if you if you want to go that route, that getting out of school you do get into um, professions or environments that is going to give you that professional experience. And if your ultimate objective is to not be in a smaller mid-sized business, um, 
which if it if it is that's that's fine that's completely valid it's my area of research it's it's what i love but if you are going to look towards the fortune 500 um tract that maybe later the ability to go back and get your MBA or another professional degree at a school that's going to allow you those on-campus interviews or um, the early interview process where you can potentially get your foot in the door at the ground level of um, a uh, the management professional tract within the organization. Okay, so anyway, um, again, uh, it is a sensitive subject, but it is important to to understand or at least recognize that this dichotomy of um, of class or characteristic or categories of employee and uh, and jobs within an organization exists, so you can adequately prepare or plan your education and your professional experience and. Um, for the type of career and the manner that you can move up in the organization.